If you are someone who wants to be efficient with your time spent, then this is not the video for you. Rather, this is for those of you who would like to prepare as much as possible to make the Cataclysm experience just that bit smoother. We'll be going over 6 things you can do either right now or as soon as the pre-patch hits the live servers. Will everything on this list be smooth and painless? Absolutely not. Will it give you a slight edge over your peers? You bet. And as such, here is the Raider's Guide to Cataclysm Pre-Patch. Something nice and simple that everyone can do is to prepare 25 quests in your log before the release of the expansion. That said, it'll definitely be a bit different from previous expansions where you could stack up in a bunch of materials, have startable quests in your bag, and travel around the world while still having it be a very efficient experience. We can still grab about half a level in 3 minutes, which can set you apart from the pack when it comes to heading into Deepholm at level 82, making it significantly easier to quest without competition. And trust me, I have tried to be sweaty on the pre-questing, but there is really not a lot of sweaty stuff that we can do while still being efficient with our quest turn-ins. Having Algal on reply codes in your bag is not going to do anything as you can turn them in while the roleplay is active. Saving the Shadow Morn quest turn-ins won't do you anything either as you can only turn in one at a time and then you have to wait for the roleplay to end before turning in the next. The only thing I can see being fit into a turn in rotation is getting exalted with your faction specific Ultra Valley reputation for the 6 instant turn ins, but even that only grants about 50,000 experience and requires you to have special items like Janus Locket and Wormholes to make the rest of the route work. Instead, I'd recommend completing all of the Argent tournament dailies you have available All Sons of Holy Quest, the two daily heroic and weekly raid quests fishing daily, and possibly some quests aboard a faction-specific ship in Ice Crown. You should have an Everfrost chip in your bag that you can get from the ground here or here. If you want to be a bit extra, grab a Head of Phoenixia as well that you can turn in before heading into the Cataclysm content. Start the expansion on launch at the Sons of Hoder's Zone, use a Wormhold or Argent Crusader's Tabard to turn in the Argent Tournament quest, fly to Orgrim's Hammer, turn in, Janus Locket or Hearthstone to Dalaran to turn in the rest. Don't forget to click the quest items in your bag before leaving the Sons of Hoder's Zone. You may want to alter the route depending on if you're staying in Northrend until level 82 or heading straight to Hyjal. Another thing you can do to give yourself a bit of a head start in the new expansion is to have crafting materials in your bank for whatever profession you're trying to max in Cataclysm. Wrath of Lich King crafts don't simply stop giving skill points after 450, so you can stack up on materials to instantly craft stuff after you learn the new Cataclysm training. Alchemy can make flask all the way up to 465, jewel crafters can make epic gems to 465, and so on. To check what's available for your profession, you can simply go to Wowhead and search for your profession. Almost every profession will have something that they can do that benefits them. And even engineering will get a solid head start by doing this until they can start crafting Electrified Ether at 455. Another thing you can do to make the leveling process easier is to get exalted with the Oracles. You mean the reputation where we have to collect shinies every day? Yes, that damn reputation. This won't be applicable for all classes. But for DK's rocking two-handed Frost with Shadowmorn, going mob to mob and instantly killing everything with Frost Strike while getting 80 running power back after killing each mob will make the questing experience a hell of a lot smoother. Not to mention that you don't have to worry about removing your Deathbringer's will proc every time before mounting. It grants around 5% mana per trinket equipped, so if you're a class that has downtime due to drinking, then this might be an option worth considering as well. You can get 1,700 reputation per day by doing 3 daily quests at the faction hub, which takes about 5 minutes. So if you're starting fresh with the reputation, then it's time to start collecting those shinies. In the spirit of small things you can do during pre-patch to help you during the leveling process, you can already in the pre-patch start doing cooking dailies in Orgrimmar to start collecting Chef's Award before the expansion is released. The dailies grant you between 1 and 2 tokens per day, and each Cataclysm cooking recipe costs 3 tokens. For strength users, you can get all the recipes you know you'll get materials for while questing. Then once you reach 500 cooking, you can learn the 90 strength food straight from your bag and start cooking up some crocodiles around level 83 as they will be a part of your questing route once you get to Oldham. If nothing else, it'll speed up the process for the guild to get access to feast and you'll be able to craft your raid food at 85 without spending an arm and leg on the auction house. The quest also grants you 24,000 experience and can be included in your pre-questing route. 
But the big thing to do during pre-patch to get a leg up on your Cataclysm pre bis gearing is to head out to Eastern Kingdom while digging for artifacts. As was announced in the Cataclysm release information, we'll be able to start leveling up our archaeology to level 450 before Cataclysm even comes out. That means that we'll be able to have the skill required to discover the 359 previous epic items before we're level 85. With that said, doing it during the pre-patch will be a bit of a nightmare since we presumably won't have access to the flying license for the old world. That means you'll either have to fly around flight master to flight master while running around your ground mount, or bank on warlocks on your server smelling a business opportunity while charging a fee for summons to each of the Eastern Kingdom dig sites. Keep in mind that you can start digging in Outlands at level 300, so I would highly recommend doing that to ease the suffering. Remember that while you level up, you gain skill points between 1 to 100 from simply surveying dig sites, so refrain from crafting anything before reaching level 100. And never ever craft anything without using your keystone slot whenever they're available. I'll go out on a limb and say that while 450 is the skill required to discover the epic weapons, you won't actually be able to discover them during the pre-patch. But getting to 450 while having 200 fragments for the appropriate tribe stocked up, which is the cap, should be something to aim for for everyone. Having a bunch of keystones stacked up is not a bad idea either, as they could be quite expensive during launch when less people are out digging for fragments. If you want to be extremely sweaty, you can level to 450 on multiple characters while stacking up 200 fragments. All epic items are binary on account, so they can be sent between characters if you get it on a different character. This also means that if you play on a PvP server but don't want to bother with PvP, you can do the farm on a character on a different realm, then send over the item to your main realm once you get it. If you have access to a dwarf, then that will be the best character to do the farm on as they will have a passive increasing the fragment drop rate as well as faster survey casts. But even if you're not a min-max raider, archaeology will have a ton of interesting things to offer. I'll hand it over to Carrot to showcase some of what's available. You alright folks, the name's Carrot, and I am rather fond of sweeping up those oh-so-pesky vanity items, particularly mounts, and cramming them into my ever-growing collection. I have no idea why, it's probably down to some sort of undiagnosed trauma from my earlier years. But if, like me, you enjoy going above and beyond for those extra mind-numbing, soul-destroying vanity grinds, then archaeology is indeed the profession for you. You've got mounts such as the fossilized raptor or the scepter of Aj Akir, pets like the clockwork gnome or the fossilized hatchling, then there are the toys like the Vrykul drinking horn or the bones of transformation, so if you feel like annoying your raid leader by waiting till everyone in the group has turned themselves into a naga before each and every pull, this is where you get the tools to do just that. It is also worth saying you'll probably find a lot of these glorious gizmos whilst hunting those oh so precious BOA epics that Riani has skillfully gone over in detail, and the great thing about about all those bells and whistles is their account wide, so as long as you find them on one character, you can use them on all. So no need to go and find 10 fossil raptors to furnish your entire character list with, because you have some sort of unsettling desire to RP walk into every situation astride a prehistoric monster in dire need of a sandwich. However, if you don't actually manage to come across them whilst digging up your lovely, lovely epics, but you want to be followed around by the ghost of some random innkeeper from days past, I suggest you keep shoveling, because you should find what you're after eventually. You've got three weeks to waste, so what else to do apart from scream into the abyss when you make your 100th Ammonite instead of coming across that oh-so-coveted raptor? It is the ultimate time sink for folk who have nothing better to do, but want to work towards something cool so they can stare at it as they AFK in Stormwind or Orgrimmar. Now, on my channel, I've got a video going over a few bits and pieces you can do in the pre-patch, aside from getting yourself raid ready, and I even go over archaeology a little bit more in depth. So hop on over there and check that out if you fancy. But for now, I'll hand you back to the bloke you actually came here to listen to. Now, the last thing that everyone should check off their preparation checklist is to get Justice Point and Honor capped. Most people will get the Justice Point cap for free by simply having 346 Emblems of Frost or Triumph once a pre-patch hits. But if you don't, then now is the time to farm that out. In 4.3, a vendor was added to convert Honor to Justice Points at a reduced rate. 
but that may or may not be in the game on release. It's currently in on the beta, so I wouldn't be surprised if it stays. If not, then having 4000 honor points to pick up a few PvP pieces once you hit 80 won't be a bad idea either, as it'll help you towards the item level required to queue for heroic dungeons. You can potentially stack past 4000 honor by saving up Wintergrasp commendations in order to use them after you've spent some honor in Cataclysm. On the beta, they convert to 150 honor, but the honor conversion should give them 50 honor. But whether it's 150 or 50, it will still be a nice boost as you hit level 85 if it stays in the game. Now go out and prepare for Cataclysm. Carrot has released the second part to this video about things to do during the pre-patch, so make sure to head over to check out his channel, say hi, and subscribe. But that's all for now. Thank you very much for watching. Until next time.